It's the cold jazz. We stick to the cold jazz. Wow, what it is, man. Welcome back to another episode of Stick to the Cold Podcast. Look, man, you already know you got your boy A.O. right here. And what we doing? It's talking tech, kicking coaching, man. Let's get right into it. Man, last week was fucking crazy, man. Off the bat, so much Apple news. Like, like I said, I'm not an Apple user like that, but for y'all Apple users and people who like me, just tech fans in general, man, Apple got a lot of stuff going on. It's a couple of things that kind of had me kind of jealous. Like, I'm, maybe if I wanted to get an uh, Apple phone or something, but nah, I don't see myself switching, but they got some cool stuff going on. So, just, and I'm gonna get into a little bit about it uh, later on, like with Apple CarPlay, because it was some things I kind of looked into and found out a bit more information that kind of seemed like Apple might just be blowing a little smoke, but we're gonna talk about that. Uh, but what I'm really gonna start this podcast off with is a goddamn rant. And you know, you know, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. My bad. I'm, I'm gonna hold off my rant real quick, and I'm gonna shout out to, uh, I'm gonna shout out to an event I did. So, matter of fact, last two is when this podcast came out. Um, that same day, I wound up having a, a podcast event in Houston that was local to the area. Pod Houston, shout out to them, man. It was a dope event. Got a chance to kind of link up with other podcasters. Talk to a whole lot of people who pretty much were telling me, oh, I'm like, how long you been doing your podcast? Oh, I'm on episode 100 something, 200 something. I think somebody said 500. I don't know, but I heard a whole lot of numbers. People on like their third, fourth podcast that's all been past 100. I'm like, yeah, I just dropped episode number five. <laughs> but look, man, it is what it is. You got to start somewhere. That's what pretty much everybody was talking with me. So, man, I'm hoping y'all rocking with how I'm doing it so far. And my game plan is in the future, man, we're going to try to get guests on this podcast, you know, kind of talk a little bit, get a little uh, different side other than just me talking my shit. But it was a dope ass event. Definitely hope I can link up with some of the folks I'm out there. So, man, shout out to Pod Houston, uh, growing community within Houston for podcast community, you know. But now I'm going to get to my rant. Google Podcast. I've, I use it, but damn, the app get on my nerves. So... Last week, if you use Google to listen to your podcast and you check out my podcast, you might would have noticed for some reason the podcast wasn't showing, it wasn't airing, it wasn't doing nothing. And I think it took like a few days for my podcast to actually show up on Google Podcasts. And that shit was so annoying. It was like, Google, what the hell? And so y'all already know, if you didn't listen to this podcast before, you didn't already hear it. I use Google Podcasts, but I don't like the app, and I hope they come out with YouTube Podcasts. And that was just another reason I'm like, man, y'all barely manage this app. It's like, we got the app, but we don't really care about it. And that's how I feel. Like, uh, not even just my podcast. Like, another podcast I listen to, another tech podcast, The Verge Cast, they podcast ain't come out, and it was like damn near a whole another week before I had that podcast. I ain't feel like trying to go to a different platform and start doing my podcast and listening to it from there. So that was just like mad and knowing I'm like, this one I normally listen to, but I can't listen to it because y'all on that bullshit. Like, damn. So I know you, I look, I know I'm ranting about something that it seemed like Google already working on. Like, it seemed like they already got a YouTube podcast in the work or something to an actual podcast or better implemented with YouTube. But until that get announced, until I see that, I'm going to complain and be like, Google, get rid of Google Podcasts and make YouTube Podcasts work like you did with YouTube Music. Because this shit be annoying me. Like, the app on the cool, I just use it because I ain't the type of person who, like, downloading a lot of apps. It already come with it, podcast free. Like, it's a decent little app, but it's, it's not as intuitive, you know what I mean? So, it's like, it's straight, but it ain't, like, the best type of joint. Because I really was thinking about getting po- uh, about getting Spotify just for podcasts. That's how I know what I was with it. This was, like, past week. But I'm going to hold off on it. Hopefully, some point in time in the next few months or something like that, Google will make some kind of news about YouTube podcasts coming out. Because I really feel like that could be, like, a dope-ass thing. I done told y'all before, like, you already got videos. Most uh, video podcasts are on YouTube. Like, that's just automatically where you put a video podcast at. Like, bam. So, like... Come on, make it happen. And I feel like if you if YouTube do it, like I know I was like they should have a YouTube podcast, but I really wonder if they're gonna try to do the spot uh, the Spotify Spotify route <laughs> and have it with everything like music and podcasts on the same app, or if they're gonna do it a different joint. So if it's gonna be YouTube music and all in the podcast all together, I was thinking like what, like. I don't, I don't know. Like, I feel like having the word music in because Spotify just a word. Like, if you got YouTube music, I feel like you got to have a like, YouTube audio or some dumb shit like that, YouTube sounds or something. But I don't know, man. Regardless of how y'all do it, just get it fixed, man. I, I ain't finna run this rant too long. 
I ain't gonna try to just be on this shit just ranting at the beginning too long. But man, that really drove me like the fact my podcast was days behind. I'm like, hey, look, babe, I'm just talking. Y'all can't be slowing me down at the top like that. Now, come on, goo. Get it together, baby. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, let me go and get off of that. Uh, next up on the news, we're going to get into, not really even getting into, just kind of mention it. Like I told y'all, I seen like until the deal close, I'm going to bring it up every week. You got Elon Musk, Twitter deal. Like I said, like last week, he was having like the information talking about how they wasn't giving him information about the bots and all of the little information. It seemed like Twitter was like, oh, word, oh, bet we ain't giving you the information. I bet we're going to give y'all, give you all the data so that you can't have no reason to back out this deal because we need that money. <laughs> And so, uh, it seemed like what they call it is like the fire hose data, which is basically all the data. Like if you followed every little, every person who was on Twitter, get access to all that information. So they giving that to Elon Musk. So pretty much he don't got no reason to back out of the deal, but, uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be something new in that deal next week for me to talk about. I hope it ain't. Cause I'm really, it ain't, it ain't that much to talk about it, but just always sun is always something with the deal. It's crazy, man. Drink that just water. When they give me that advertisement, matter of fact, like drink just water if you fuck with it. But when they uh, link up with me, then for sure drink that just water. Trying to get that advertisement. <laughs> so, man, that's that's just something going on. Switching from that right there, you got Elon, Tesla. Let's get into some EV news. Matter of fact, uh, before we get straight to EV news, we're just going to get to cars in general. We're going to talk about, uh, like I was telling y'all, Apple CarPlay. So, to me, like I told y'all, man, what Apple did with the CarPlay or the announcement they made to where they're going to change it to where pretty much your whole display like whether the joint behind it which a miles per hour fuel gauge all of that's supposed to be run by apple and i ain't gonna lie like i said to me it looked dope it still do look dope but we're kind of looking into it and some of the stuff apple didn't said before in the past it seemed like apple just was like hey bet we doing this but they ain't really talked to none of the car makers you know the people who actually you need to agree with you and put they put your stuff in their cars it don't seem like they didn't actually talk to any of those people. So it's like, y'all made this announcement, but who call you for to put this in? Because you ain't talked to nobody except for yourself, it seemed like. So it's like all of those companies pretty much was like, oh, bet. Apple said that, but we ain't really, I don't know, we doing it. So like one of the things I seen was uh, from The Verge, they reached out to a lot of automakers, automakers and was like, uh, so Apple said they finna take over your car uh, display. W w how you feel about that? And so it was just like a bunch of companies was like, yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, pretty here, here go uh, the feedback that they got from it. Uh, like I said, this comes from the Verge, but BMW was like, uh, currently we have placed a clear focus on further enhancing our iDrive user interface system. And as part of this development, we'll continue the seamless integration of Apple's ecosystem. Integral, integral, integral <laughs> uh, to these efforts will be an evolute, evaluation of how the latest Innovations announced that WWDC can be integrated into our solutions. Basically, uh, we ain't guaranteeing we're doing it. Volvo, at this time, we don't have anything to share beyond that we plan to support this next generation of Apple CarPlay and future vehicles. Not a promise. Toyota, we can't come in or speculate on future products at this time. Ford, thanks for reaching out on the next generation Apple CarPlay story. We don't have any additional information to share at this time. Polestar, which is another Volvo company. Apple CarPlay will come to Polestar 2 as part of an OTA update later this month. We're also thrilled to announce that the next generation of CarPlay will be coming to Polestar cars in the future. So they don't even have Apple CarPlay on their regular vehicles right now. You talking about y'all finna be on all these systems? Stellantis, which is like um, Stellantis is like Jeep, Dodge, Ram, um, all that, Chrysler. That's, that's that kind of joint right there. Fiat and all that. That's Stellantis. Uh, this is more than an extension rather than a direct CarPlay upgrade. We have not made any announcements regarding that system. So it's like uh, Apple seems like they're trying to do a lot. We, we ain't sure we running with all that. GM, General Motors has no specific comments so announced at this time. Mercedes Benz, in general, we evaluate all potential relevant new technologies and functions internally. In this context, we also hold discussions with Apple. Um, and it looked like they reached out to Volkswagen, Hyundai, Nissan, and Honda, and none of them hit them back. So basically, Apple got some game plans to do some dope ass shit, and a bunch of car companies are like, yeah, we we don't we don't know if we're gonna do that with you. 
you you why you why you don't be putting our name out there like that like you apple so you can't speak bad like now nah, apple on bullshit but it's also like man don't be saying we finna do that we 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 probably ain't finna do that like and then i looked into it a little bit more like apple had some car play shit they announced back in the gap like a couple years ago i think like 2019 and it was like oh it was kind of like more taking over the shit and car companies was like nah i don't know about that and you don't have that in cars so like i said to me it looked dope in the beginning but now that i look into it a bit more we may not be seeing Apple do all that. Again, I'm not using an iPhone, so it don't really matter to me. I'm Android Auto. Like, wait, well, hey, let's make sure the Android Auto shit looking good. But uh, like I said, it looked dope, but I don't see it actually happening in cars. So who knows what's going on with that? Maybe Apple going to actually make an Apple car, and then y'all can get it in that. Like, you know, Apple car going to be decked out with all Apple. You ain't even going to have Android Auto as an option in, <laughs> in an Apple car. Uh, but I'm pretty sure Apple car would be a dope-ass car. Like, ain't, ain't no telling. Like, if Apple drop it, you know it's going to be hard. We're gonna have like a whole bunch of updates that gotta get put out. Hope you don't have no like no being gate or nothing like that with Apple, but this shit gonna be hard. And you know it's gonna be an EV. And speaking of EVs, you got another company who then decided that, hey, look, baby, we finna go all in on this EV trend with one of our brands that's kind of not doing as good as the other brands. So Buick is supposed, which is a GM brand, is supposed to be becoming an all EV brand. In the next decade, so the game plan is it's 2022. By the end of the decade, every new Buick is going to be an EV. And, I mean, you always got to thank Tesla for the fact that how much they didn't push the EV market. Because I remember, like, a few years back, like, when I was a young, like, I mean, like, a kid, probably high school, hearing about companies being like, oh, yeah, we finna get all EVs. We're going to get gas cars off the uh, road and stuff like that. Man, ain't moved nowhere toward that in the 10, 15 years since then. Uh, speaking of my age too much right now. <laughs> but, yeah, man, so... You ain't had nothing like that happen. And then now it's like, oh, Tesla. Oh, folks like Teslas? You ain't got to make an EV look ugly and stupid? Because that was the biggest joint for the longest. Like, every time somebody did an EV, that shit looked ugly. It's like, I mean, that, that electric car stuff sound cool, but that car look poo. I don't want to drive that. So, like, now you got cars that actually look like a regular car. Like, you can't just shift from running into it, driving this to driving the ugly version of the Batmobile or something like that. Like, don't nobody want that. So, uh, that's dope. But to me, like, what Buick doing, of course, they dropped, like, some content, uh, con concept versions of it. So, it was, like, the Electra and the uh, Wildcat. I think Electra going to actually be the name brand that they're going to use for their EVs. And the first actual Buick EV is supposed to drop in 2024. So, look forward to seeing that come out. Just because it's, it's good to always see all these companies, that's the legacy companies that been making shit, to go ahead and have them shift to making EVs that the regular person can get. Buick ain't a brand that just have all that luxury, that, that, that same kind of clout. Because, like, even though they didn't try to do little switch-ups on it, the mindset, and even my mindset, when you think of a Buick, you think of, like, yeah, that's like that old man car. That's that, that's that old kind of vibe car. And don't get me wrong, like, I done been in a Buick. I done, I done been around. There's, there's some decent cars. But, like, in your mind, it's like, Buick, that don't even sound cool, though. That, that don't even sound cool. <laughs> Hey, but look, man, at the same time, y'all already know. Hey, Buick, I do advertise and we can link up with you. Drive them, do, do like the, uh, what it was, the Shaq commercials with the Buick where he was up in there. You know he was just in that thing like this, couldn't move nowhere. That's, that's what it was. Hey, Buick, we can get that uh, deal going if you want it, baby. Uh, I can be a Buick EV man if you want to. I'm 6'6". I'm six, six. I ain't Shaq hype, but I can still be up in y'all cars like, hey, yeah, you want to get this uh, new Buick? I got you. <laughs> you feel me? But yeah, so man, that's 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 what Buick got going. Like I said, their first EV is supposed to drop 2024. And what really what, what they doing right there, another GM brand, Cadillac, what Buick got kind of remind me of that. Cause like I want to say it was a year or two, something like that, when Cadillac made a decision that they finna shift to all EVs. And outside of this podcast, I work in like the automotive industry. And it's like I remember like a bunch of the uh dealerships and brands and stuff kind of being like yeah, I see what y'all doing, GM. Cadillac, you you got to be all EVs. So, like, a bunch of stores was like, hey, we ain't Cadillac dealerships no more. Because, <laughs> like, they, like you know, in certain areas, like, people don't want EVs, especially, like, in your mind. You thinking, like, old school is like, I don't want to, but we're not ready to be an all-electric brand like that. So, a bunch of the Cadillac stores got closed. I'm expecting, honestly, um, I expect something like that to happen with a few Buick stores. Like, if you got to be all Buick, but at the same time, Buick usually isn't a standalone store like that. Uh, like how a Cadillac is, like you have just a Cadillac store, but Buick, you have Buick, GMC, um, it might be mostly a Buick and GMC, but you have them shits together, so we'll see how that play out, man. And and they got a new logo, it's it's a cool looking logo, not, I mean, 
people ain't caring about Buick, so hopefully that new logo will kind of have folks like what that is. Instead of being like, oh, that's the old Buick shit. That's that's cool. I don't want that car. Who else we got going with news? Netflix. We're going to go ahead and just shift right over to Netflix, which had the Netflix Geek Week uh, that just popped off. And I did not get a chance to watch it. Like, I ain't gonna lie, like, I, ain't, I ain't a crazy Netflix nerd like that. Like, I be on Netflix still. Like, I told y'all before, like, man, I be, I be watching my little Netflix, you hear me? But I am not watching all that content because Netflix is usually making too much damn content for me. It's like, bam, 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 bam. Hold on, hold on. What's good that y'all got? Like, y'all giving me too much. Because, like, for me, one of my biggest things with Netflix, I feel like Netflix does, like, how HBO. Uh, do sometimes like they make great series like they make movie quality series so like when they have like a especially like in a fantasy world or something like that like uh they do uh those series like you got stranger things crazy stupid big and it's like a movie every time you watching an episode so netflix do that good but sometimes they just try to make too much content it's like hey baby focus on what you're doing instead of doing so much like know what your lane is like some companies that's making crazy disney is printing money in the world of where it's at. Why? Because they know what they lane is. They, we got superheroes and princesses. What you talking about? We'll do a couple of little things there now and again, but mostly you're going to get superheroes and princess. And you want some Star Wars shit, which is superheroes in space. You feel me? So, man, look, know what y'all lane is. But, like I said, man, they had the Netflix Geek Week. And I'm going to mostly just kind of run down through it, like the interesting parts to me. Like, they had like five days, pretty much all of them had like different little themes. So, like, Monday was TV shows, and with that, like, you got, like, your uh, TV show, I'm a, some of the ones I don't watch, Umbrella Academy, which I, I, I only watched, like, a couple episodes. I ain't gonna stun with you the first season, but Sweet Tooth, I watched that. Uh, you got the Wednesday show, which is based on uh, Adam's family, little girl. Like, I think she's supposed to be going to high school, so that's gonna be something kind of cool. And if you see what I'm rocking today... Uh, you got my One Piece shirt rocking right here. So the One Piece live action movie, what well, TV show is supposed to be being made. I look forward to ha seeing how that work out. Like, you know, anime, if you in the anime, you know, a lot of times when they make like a, when they make like a TV show or try to make like an anime live action, that should be pulled a lot of times. I'm looking at you, Dragon Ball Evolution. And it's just like, man, that is not worth watching. I'm not finna tune in to that. So hopefully this new One Piece joint be kind of like popping the same. But if it ain't, you know, the fans gonna let you know real, real quick. And Netflix be quick to cancel a show. So I hope that's another thing for me. Netflix be way too quick to cancel some shit. I'm like, look, I don't know what y'all inside metrics look like, but y'all be dropping a TV show and be like four days later. Hey, I'm canceling that shit. And, hey, look, man, we need all this shit. We, we spent too much money. We need instant splash. Get some damn ass going somewhere else. Get, get people paying attention. Put your shit in theaters. Shit. Stop doing all this shit y'all been doing. Change it up. But hey, that's how it is. What else we got? Netflix got a uh, week. The um, Tuesday was films. So you had like your uh, one joint. I seen the trailer for Troll. I don't, I don't really watch suspense movies. I don't know what kind of joint it is, but it looked kind of dope as hell. Uh, sea Beast uh, Blasted, which was like in another language, but it looked cool as hell. It was like on some little dumb shit. So that was a cool looking joint. School for Good and Evil, Wendell and Wow, uh, which is by Jordan Peele. Which is something like just off the strength of like, hey, look, I ain't gonna lie, like if it was a black creator attached to it and it looked like it might be my lane, I might want to check it out. I don't really like the kind of animation that it's doing on it. That ain't my speed, but I know Jordan Peele always doing some dope work, so it's, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a dope ass uh, TV show. Or I think it's a uh, film, but Wendell in the Wild. So that's some dope stuff that they got coming out in the TV range. Wednesday was animation, so based on the video game Cyberpunk 2077, you got the Cyberpunk. Uh, I think it's a TV show that's supposed to be done with that. You got Tekken based on a video game. You got Cuphead. You got a look like a Sonic the Hedgehog uh, joint coming out. And which is crazy given the fact that right now you got the Sonic movies going on in theaters too. So it's like, hey, Sonic trying to have a little shake back right there. Hey, I see you, Sega. I see you, baby. Man, I used to, hey, I ain't gonna lie. Like, you know how you got the Game Wars, how you got like PlayStation and uh, PlayStation and Xbox right now. It's crazy to think about there was a point in time there was no PlayStation, no Xbox. It was Sega and Nintendo. And I was on, I ain't gonna lie, I was rocking with Sega. Like, I, I played the Nintendo, though. Like, hey, see me on that Mario Kart. And I'm talking about the first one, you hear me? And we can get some 64, too. We can take it back, you hear me? 
But like, so that was like the joints back then, like Sega, Nintendo. So it was like Sonic, Mario. Those were the two joints. And then, you know, Sega had Dreamcast, they, which was a dope ass product. Just came out too early. That was before people were ready to uh, do discs and shit like that. You still having cartridges. Folks were too used to, <laughs> you had to blow that game off. That's what everybody was used to. So they dropped their Dreamcast. It was like, oh, I don't, a scratch? You can't blow off no scratch. <laughs> So <laughs> that's why uh, Dreamcast ain't work out. It was ahead of its time. That's one of them ahead of its time products right there. But yeah, so they supposed to have that going. And another animation, Intergalactic, which is by uh, Kid Cudi and produced with Kenya Bears, which is the dude from Blackish, produced from Blackish and other content like that. I'm not really, it didn't look like the storyline don't seem like something i'd be interested into it but the names that they got associated with it and just the kind of vibe that i got from it strangely had me like hey i think i'm gonna try to rock with that like it was it was like it seemed like some real shit so i like I'm, I'm gonna try to tap in with that you got like Jaden smith vanessa hudgens uh tiana taylor shit like it's, it's it's a it's a bunch of other people like uh i'm gonna fuck up dude name but i'm gonna say it anyway uh timothy chalamet Shala, shalot shalot or whatever yeah you know i mean him you know what i'm talking about Brody from uh, Spider Man. They got, nah, he ain't in Spider Man. Shit, I'm tripping. That's, that's bro from, uh, uh, what that one is? Uh, Doom. That's dude from Doom. Him right there. So, uh, he's supposed to be up in that joint. So, it's like it's some dope ass shit supposed to be going on with that. So, it's always cool. Like I say, you got some melanin shows being produced and it looked like a dope vibe, like regardless of the race. Cause I mean, look, I'm supporting black content, but also it gotta be dope. Cause sometimes like black content kind of be caught in the lane of being dramatic or sad or like oppressive or like our situations like I ain't gonna lie i get it it happened i experienced experience too much every day being black and the struggles of it that like watching like a slave movie like i just can't do it like even if it's dope made great like man i, I ain't got time to watch that oppression right now i'm living through oppression sometimes some days i can't watch it on tv man i can't i can't watch it but shout out to people who are making that content and the people who need it because sometimes people need to see that I just don't need to see it myself right now. <laughs> uh, what else you had? Stranger Things got a whole damn day to itself. Thursday was just Stranger Things Day. I, again, like I told you, I, I ain't watched Stranger Things. And I talked to somebody like this past weekend, had a little joint, a little birthday party we dipped out to. And they was kind of mad over the fact that Stranger Things got broken up into two seasons. In my mind, I feel like Netflix needs to start doing that because y'all have, like I told y'all, man, they drop blockbuster shit all at the same time but i'm like hey look man put a little break in between it give people a reason to have to come back for that same content instead of like oh i've been waiting for stranger things and you just binge watch it all in like one or two three days and you're like all right i'm through with stranger things like nah make me have a reason to come back though because you know that shit long ain't no telling how many times people re-watching it so i feel like that's dope but it was just crazy for me like knowing the type of watch i am i ain't binge watching through that much content that fast but under, hearing like somebody else being like, I'm mad that they ain't dropping it at the same time. Like it was, it was uh, like my girl, she's supposed to watch it. And she was like, they was telling her like, hey, look, man, just wait for it. Cause you're going to be mad if you just watch the first uh, few episodes that they put out. So, but like I say, Stranger Things is crazy big. You can't help it. It's, it's the fact that they had five days and you got film, TV, animation, and then <laughs> Stranger Things get a day all to itself. That's how you know how big that is for Netflix. Uh, even though Squid Games is was the most streamed in a short amount of time, it don't change the fact that Stranger Things and the content, because that's something that you actually, they actually sell merchandise for. So you know they're getting money for that right there. And Day 5 Friday was gaming. And so you had like games based on some of like their bigger content. So like uh, Queen's Gambit, which was a chess game. They got like a little chess joint for that right there. Um, Shadow and Bone, which was a... Uh, a fantasy based on a book, like a little uh, TV show on that. That was pretty big when it came out. And Money Heist, which is, um, I think it's a foreign content uh, thing, but it's also one of Netflix's biggest things, Money Heist. So they got a video game being based on that. So Netflix definitely trying to push into the uh, gaming, mo mostly the mobile gaming area, but like definitely trying to make a push with that. And I mean, shit, games making money and you got to diversify your portfolio. So can't be mad at that. Uh, what else we got? Tech, we got tech laws. Um, so you have like a couple things that legislation that got passed. One big thing was in New York, you they passed the right to repair, and pretty much what that allows is if you got a phone or you got anything like mobile devices, laptops, things like that, just any regular cons uh, consumption products. And I don't know how far it's gonna reach out to, 
Um, cause like if you if you into like the the uh woods or hedges or whatever you call it with it, you'll know that like with tractor companies and like farming, they got like a big right to repair thing because like John Deere and different things like that, they have like a lot of programs on these tractors and shit that if you don't uh have access to it, you really can't repair your own tractor and you gotta go all the way out your way for it. So that's a thing. I don't know how that applies to that with New York. Uh, Cause I don't know how the New York culture is as far as agriculture. Cause I mostly think of New York as New York City, though. You got like your small New York areas, but I'm really thinking like New York City when I'm thinking like ain't no goddamn tractors out there. But the main part of it is that like phones, things like that, they passing it to uh, companies. If you sell your device in New York, you are gonna have to uh, provide ways for people to fix their phone without having to go directly through you. So a uh, big thing for that is like looking at companies like Apple, Samsung. Google, things like that. They make products that sometimes you may not have as much access to. Apple being one of the bigger ones. A lot of, a lot, a lot of shit be directed to Apple because Apple be doing shit that kind of keep them making money, but also kind of limit what other people can do. So I think that's a good thing. And because with this New York, it might help, even though it's only in that one state, it'll help other areas because if you're doing it in New York, you might as well do it in Ohio. You might as well do it in Louisiana, Texas, California. You know what I mean? So... That's uh, kind of how that's going. And in the EU, which is the European Union, they pat, they're they still voting on making USB-C mandatory for all devices, pretty much all kind of mobile or smaller tech devices. Oh, and shit, my bad. With the New York one, they still need to get that one passed in the law. And after it passed, it'll be like a year from now as far as how long you got to actually make it available to everyone. But yeah, so with the EU win for the USB-C, everybody already know basically every phone other than Apple uses USB-C. So with that, if it get passed, Apple will have to start using USB-C for their devices. Unless Apple do what a lot of people thinking that they might do or they planning to do if they can pull it off. It's making everything wirelessly charged. I personally don't use wireless charging because uh, most of the time I'm in access to a full charger. So I'd rather just go ahead and jump my uh, phone straight up. Because, I mean, wireless charging is going to be slower just by the way it works automatically. So, I don't really rock with it too much. And so, with that, if it get passed, you're going to have two years on that till it actually get implemented. So, 2024. But if it get passed, you're going to have to have, have a lot more consistency with products. A lot less companies able to, like, make extra little shit to where your devices can't charge. Like, all you got to need is probably about two or three USB-C charges and you'll be straight. Ain't no telling if it's going to actually work. The reason for it is so that you can get rid of people having to waste so much money buying extra shit. But uh, we'll see how that work out, man. TikTok is supposed to be announcing a timer to where it can kind of like let you know, hey, you've been on your phone too much. You've been on TikTok too much. I don't really see that working out. Like, it sounds cool to me. That's like one of them. The optics sound real cool. But it's like, I don't think. The people that it actually apply to, that it really matter to, I don't think it's really going to change much. Because on your phone, I don't know if y'all know it, but on your phone, you already got the ability to, whether it's Apple or Android, you already got the ability to set timers on apps to where, okay, I'm spending too much time on this kind of app. I'm spending too much time here, like, limited. I ain't going to, I didn't try it. Like, sometimes I can go with it, but, like, because I got to uh, post shit and uh, interact with different things, like Instagram or TikTok or something, put, like, a 20-minute, 30-minute time on there. Sometimes I done been wasting time on TikTok, but sometimes I'm doing shit on TikTok. So, you know, so like I, I feel like it's the type of thing to where it sound good to do. But, man, people ain't finna be stopping on that. Like if you on your phone and you want to be on your phone, you know you on your phone. Like at this point in time in society, people know you on. So if you on social media too much, you probably know you on social media too much. Ain't nobody got to tell you that. So like having the app, it ain't going to really change. But it's because Instagram got one. Got a uh, thing like that. Don't nobody use it. Ain't nobody finna use it. Like, it ain't gonna change, man. So, I feel like it's cool to have. It's great to do things like that. But the way people use their devices, I don't really see it being able to make the change that the goal is for. But, I mean, it's good that companies putting things like that out there. Especially with TikTok, which is just like one of them. You can, I ain't gonna lie. I, be, I, don't, I, ain't a, I ain't a huge social media person. But TikTok is one of them joints you just can lose yourself in, like... Damn, ho, sh hold on. How, how much time am I to spend on TikTok? And like, I know I got a pot, and I be trying to tell him, like, bro, you going to rock with TikTok if you get on it. But at the same time, he like, look, man, I'm busy. I ain't got time to get on TikTok. And, you know, he also like on that, man, TikTok ain't for me. I'm like, bro, TikTok got something for everybody. I don't care what you, 4 or 40, 
48, 58, 89. TikTok got something for you and gonna have you wasting your time on that. Uh, but also, you can learn some shit on TikTok. So, you know, yin and yang type of thing. But with it, what's a good thing for me is that, like, with youth, so, like, if you're a team between 13 and 17, they're going to have it to where it's automatic. If you spend over 100 minutes a day on your uh, on TikTok, it's going to automatically prompt you with a thing of, like, hey, you, you might want to see about getting a time on how often you spend it on TikTok. I don't think uh, you 13 or 17, you're going to be like, oh, yes, TikTok, you are show right. I'm spending too much time on this. I don't see that working out like that. Because I feel like, honestly, if you're spending that much time on that, it's because you got time because you ain't got something else that's keeping you busy enough to be doing something else. Because if you busy doing something and you got to do it, like, man, you ain't got time to be on there like that. But if you got the time, you're going to waste the time on it. So whether it's TikTok, Netflix, or whatever shit you playing Fortnite, whatever it is you're wasting time on, you're going to waste your time regardless. But, hey, it's good that they had that going on. Back getting into some Google shit. Uh, something I think is really dope that they're doing is for te- it's a teacher kind of thing. So, like, if you're in a teacher, I don't know if it's going to get uh, brought down to other people, but it's, it's not really something you might even need anyway. But so, like, with video chats, with the Google Meet on there, uh, they're adding a thing to where if you do a meeting with your kids or whatever, to where the content will automatically, at the end of it, it can transcribe it so it can get, like, make it into a Word document format to where you can share that with your kids or, like, you can easily reference it to it. So, like, for the teachers out there who might be checking out this podcast, that'll be something that might be dope for y'all uh, to just, like, obviously school year's ending, but going into next year, be able to have that content. Or, like, whenever you do something, you can easily get something to a kid. Like, oh, you need to check out when I talked about this? They can read it or something like that. Because sometimes people, like, seeing it, seeing the words help you a little bit better than reading it. So that's something dope they got going with uh, Google. Uh, on the complete flip side of Google helping things, let's talk about Google fucking up things. And like not being the most diverse, I mean it's America. I mean it's the world, really. I mean uh, diversity ain't where it need to be sometimes. And so Google just had a hundred and eighteen million dollar settlement, class action settlement, uh, based off of pretty much gender inequality on paying for women, and it wound up being fifteen hundred. Uh, I mean no, fifteen thousand five hundred, if I'm not mistaken, women involved in a, a case for it, and it's just like. Damn, that's crazy. Like, the fact that you have these companies that's trillion-dollar companies, like, trillion-dollar companies. But at the same time, if you ain't pretty much the, the situation is if you ain't a white male, you probably getting paid less. Uh, you getting paid less than them if you're doing the same job. So this case right here is only referring to, like, women. But also, like, whether you are a minority from a sexuality standpoint you are a minority from a race standpoint, like I am. You are a minority from uh, just whatever the situation is. You might be not getting, you might not be making the same amount of pay. So this settlement started in 2017, or the case started in 2017 with three women who were pretty much. Uh, they they kind of checked into it and found out that they were making, if I'm not mistaken, about seventeen thousand dollars less a year than their male counterparts which is like bro we doing the same job i need to know what you making like how you how you making that much more than me you ain't that much better than me matter of fact you ain't better than me i'm better than you why are you making more money than me and that kind of remind me of something i seen uh who i want jamel hill tiktok hey sometimes you do find good information on tiktok like i was seeing something on tiktok where she was talking about how her and one of her friends like you know they they open with like how much they make like Hey, look, babe, I make this. Hey, I make this. I bet. So, like, with that situation, because, you know, a lot of times with companies, they kind of emphasize the, hey, keep your wages to yourself kind of thing. Nah, let me talk with everybody else about what they're making. Because sometimes that's the way companies kind of keep you from making what you should be making by, like, not having you talk with other people and talk with your coworkers on what they're making. It's like, nah, I know that they're making this because they told me they're making this. They showed me they checked stuff where they were making this. And they making this. Now, why am I making this? But if you don't have an open conversation with anybody, you can, you don't have anything to base it off of. So with Jamel, pretty much what she was saying was her and her friends, they just open with talking about what they make. And you got friends who are doing the same thing as you. They give you an opportunity to like, hey, look, we if you getting underpaid, or if they, they paying me this, you can find out, hey, look, if somebody offer you a deal, it's like, hold on. If I'm worth this and y'all gave them this, but they gave me this, something wrong. So like she had a friend who... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think they was offered to uh, work at some type of event, same kind of situation, news broadcasting, and pretty much to do the basically same job, 
Jamel's friend was offered half the money that she was. But I mean, at the same time, if you didn't know, you wouldn't even know that you was offered half the money of somebody else who's at, you feel like at about the same level as you. But hey, when you got a friend who able to tell you, hey, nah, they offered you a hundred thousand, they offered me two hundred thousand for that job. So now you're like, hey, a hundred thousand sound good. It, it 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 sounded good yesterday, but now that I know you offering two hundred for the same job, you kind of slighted me and cut me short. So that's always dope. So man, just just shout out to that situation. Uh, shout out to the women on being able to uh, actually get the money from that situation. I know it, um, obviously since 2017, that's a long ass time to be dealing with a, a case like that. And sometimes just, uh, it's good to get to the end part of it, but the hardships to actually get to the money of it, you got to live life and you still got to, uh, make your finances to kind of continue uh, living. So, uh, just shout out to everybody involved with that case. And I think Google will have to have independent people to make sure that they keep their shit, uh, everything, uh, up and up. Another thing we got is Spotify. Uh, trying to get into audio books. I love audio books. I listen to Audible all day. And if you listen to audio books, you pretty much know that Audible runs the audio book game. You got other companies like Barnes and Noble just got into audio books. Uh, you got audiobooks.com. You got you got a few other things, but from the streaming standpoint, because like with Google or Apple uh, books, you can buy the book, but Audio books be expensive as hell. Like you listen to a, a long audio book, like they usually about twenty dollars. Audio book usually about twenty dollars. But if you listening to like a a, a big ass audio book, I'm just be like forty, forty five dollars. Like one book. <laughs> so the fact with like Audible, you can listen to for fifteen dollars a month. You can listen to any audio book, no matter how big or short. So like having that right there is dope. That's why I subscribe to Audible. But Spotify is supposed to be getting into audiobooks. I don't really know how they're going to work with it. I feel like they got to have some type of subscription, which is probably going to be like an add on to like the music joint because you can't you can't pay the uh, little same money. Like you paying me ten dollars a month and I'm getting audiobooks and uh, music. Shit. Spotify going to sound good as hell, but uh, they trying to figure that shit out. The dude, uh, Daniel Eck, which is the CEO of Spotify, said that he feels like audiobooks is a 70 billion dollar industry potentially even though like the numbers and every other uh metric say that it ain't that expensive that uh high of a, um industry but i feel like it's dope that they're getting into it I, I feel like it's good anytime like you have another company getting into sh things shaking it up so that ain't you ain't got one motherfucker just running everything like like i say when it comes to buying uh, uh audible uh audiobooks audible run the game just like for the longest, uh, like Sunday Spotify was saying before they got into podcasts and they have become the number one place for like listening to podcasts. Apple was pretty much running the game for just a uh, podcast when it come to video content. And I ain't gonna lie. That's one that I don't see changing. YouTube is where you go to if you want to watch user created content, long form. Uh, but shit, TikTok doing this thing. So you never know, man. Look, you never know. Sometimes you feel too comfortable. You had some other little company come up behind you like, hey, look, we got some new shit. You got some new shit, man. They're going to they gonna shake on y'all, man. So you got to, uh, you just never know. Got to be ready for what's going on with that. So I feel like that's that's good that they had that going on. And Spotify say they plan to get into just different audible audio ways to make money. I don't know really beyond music, podcasts, and goddamn audio books. I don't know how many more ways y'all going to make money with audio, but... Hey, look, do y'all thing with that, with the audio uh, version of it. They supposed to be buying. They've already issued a deal or whatever. It just got to get closed. But for a company called Find A Way. And if you listen to podcasts, it's basically like anchor for uh, audio books. So that's like something that kind of like help you like getting your actual audio books out. And uh, it's independent people a little bit more. So I feel like that's cool. Um, but we're just going to see how that work out. Uh, last bit of thing is going to kind of, you know, we talk tech, we kick culture, something that's kind of a little bit walking the line of both of them. And I really kind of, for me personally, I stray away from this mostly because I don't give a damn about getting in people business. I ain't nosy. I ain't, I ain't into that kind of wave like that. Like I'm into the tech, obviously I'm into the culture, but I ain't into the mess. You feel me? So the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard case. I'm going to speak on that one. And I'm mostly speaking on it from a technical standpoint. Like obviously it's a cultural thing. Uh, and the culture shift on it was what make it what push the tech side so much. So for me, like the biggest thing is like peeping the fact YouTubers who were like dead ass doing other stuff. So I like I know I read one thing, a dude who was a 
a gamer, a whole YouTube gamer, you live streaming video games, changed his channel to doing uh, cases about the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial just because that shit was just going to be on YouTube. They was going to serve the cases. You were going to see it just off the case of that. So many people interested in it. Even if you a nobody uh, channel, it's like, oh, I, I, sh I should check and see what that is. Let me, hold on. Amber Heard, Johnny Depp. And if you put some salacious, little messy ass line on it, you're going to get attention to it. So the fact that how much that trial changed in the tech world, that's, that's really crazy to me that obviously it's a case of, you know, uh, defamation and everything going on within them. I think they were, I'm pretty sure they're married, but like their marriage and like the different things that happen in them having changes, that shit is just like crazy how much the tech world actually, not even tech so much, but like culture push tech to well, that's what the algorithm is showing people. And I mean, I ain't even interested in that shit, but like, I know I go on my own YouTube, it'd be like, Amber Heard said this, Johnny Depp said, I'm like, I don't care about that. I don't, why why y'all showing me this YouTube? I ain't into this stuff. But like, hey, it was getting served to everybody. So that just kind of like really just changed the case. So it's just crazy to me sometimes how they can be like, you just got to always pay attention to that. So like, like I said, I talk about tech, but I mean, I just want to talk about the fact like, man, sometimes you got to pay attention to like what, what these tech platforms and these different things are serving you. Sometimes what they giving you ain't what you need sometimes. Like being able to pay attention to like, hey, this interesting to me, but I don't need this in my life sometimes. So like just 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 peeping that shit out. Right, so obviously Johnny Depp won the case, but like I said again, I ain't really too much to get into uh the rights and wrongs, none of that stuff. Like I ain't in their relationship. I ain't never spent a day with either one of them. It sounds like they both got some shit on how they talk to each other, having different situations. But hey, that's me stepping back, like, hey, look, y'all gotta deal with that. And yeah, that's between y'all and the lawyers and the cases and the uh and the jury of y'all peers. Even though y'all are rich as hell and I'm pretty sure none of them peers were millionaires. <laughs> but so that's just like the situation with that. Like I said, I don't care to be nosy being people information, but I do care to just make sure. Um, regardless, because I mean, even though we got the case and the trial closes, you really don't know for sure what anything is. Because I mean, that's just people's opinions at the end of the day, how it close out. But I do feel like, hey, look, man, I just want to speak on it, man. Make sure y'all watch how quick y'all are to judge somebody or just like kind of pass judgment on a situation when you don't know everything. Like be be quicker to find out before you are quicker to be like, oh, that's wrong or that's this or that's that. Like you see somebody murder somebody, hey, look, bet. Of course, hey, that's murder. Hey, you're wrong. But man, you know, you got other different things, it's dynamics. I mean, people want to be living in a black and white world, and sometimes it's best to kind of sometimes it's easier to move black and white, but uh, you gotta have respect for the gray because it's that man. Regardless if you want to accept it or not. Man, sometimes shit great. So you just got to respect that shit sometimes. So that's just my part with that. Uh, like I said, that's the little shift right there. That's, that's the kind of in-between, between tech and culture, you feel me? Like, that's my little shift right there, you hear me? So what I'm getting to, culture, I don't got too much going on this week. NBA Finals. Hey, look, man, we knotted up 2-2 in this thing. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how it's going to go. Like, it's looking like a whole lot of back and forth between them. Like, uh, I know that boy Curry got the goddamn cooking up the other day, like, uh, dropping points on the ass. So, you just never know, man. Like, when it when it comes to that uh, game time finals, like, everybody want it. Like, everybody don't get to go to the finals. Everybody don't get to be at the, in, in the line. Like, everybody don't get to shine on the brightest stage. So, man, salute to all the players out there. I, I, ain't, I ain't a sports analyst. I watch basketball, but I'm not a basketball fan first and foremost. That's my number two sport. And I ain't watching sports like I used to. So, like, being number two don't mean I'm watching it crazy. So, man, I just, that shit just like Sunday Pay and to NBA Finals. Again, like I told y'all, I'm pulling for the Warriors. So, when y'all see them pull out the thing, you hear me? Don't say nothing to me because I ain't a Warriors fan. So, I ain't going to care anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and last thing we got going on, man, look, shout out to this uh, spot in Philly. Uh, it's, a, it's a pizza restaurant. Like, look, man, like I said, ain't, ain't too much in culture, so this is something I want to talk about. Uh, it's a place called Down North. And to me, what was dope about it was the fact that they hire, uh, they only hire ex-inmates. Uh, so only people who didn't done time, made it out, trying to get uh, reestablished in society because, unfortunately, look, man, people who go through things like that, whether you were guilty or not, the goal of the prison system is to actually have people grow, change, and become a new person to be able to re-enter society. Because if you get somebody a lifetime sentence, okay, that's that, hey, we throwing away the key on you. But if you get somebody two, three, four years, when they finish them two, three, four years, they're supposed to be able to go back into society, get a job, help, do things, be a productive member of society. 
And when jobs don't give them opportunity, people don't get a chance to do anything. Look, man, that's when you have more situations and a, and a big reason why you have people who become repeat offenders. Because it's like, look, man, I done got out. I'm going to do this. Oh, this job ain't hiring. Oh, this job ain't hiring. The street's hiring, though. And they go get a job. So, look, man, it's, it's salute to companies like that, places like that that's doing things like you got to um, you got to help your own. So, like the fact that they hiring only ex inmates and it seems like the goddamn pizza that they making up, they're bussing. They making pan pieces. They got like a little own little special recipes and all that stuff going on with it. I ain't gonna lie. Like if I ever hit the Philly area, I'm gonna try to make for sure that I pull up on down north pieces. Uh, man, it's, it's just like a good ass vibe. So. And the owner, like, they even, like, helping the inmates with the housing because, you know, sometimes when you get out, you're trying to be on your own. Or, see, sometimes the people that you knew, they ain't rocking with you no more. Folks feeling away about you. They ain't helping you like you would have thought it was. Folks who was riding with you ain't riding no more. And, like, you know, you need housing sometimes. Like, just getting a place, getting, getting to be able to live in a safe spot is hard sometimes, you feel me? And they're also helping them with lawyers. So, like, the fact that this this restaurant, you know what I mean? This, this is a job, but this job is helping you one, get income, put money in your pockets. You ain't got to ride nobody. You ain't got to do whatever it was that you did to get money beforehand. They got you in the system. You uh, need a place to sleep at. They helping you get a place to sleep. You uh, you got a court case still going on. You're trying to get you know get everything right. They helping you with that. So to me, I feel like it's mad dope that you got companies doing shit like that. So it's just like, um, it's just always dope to look at that right there. <laughs> And <laughs> you already know. Hold on. Hey, look. I'm going to come in with this motherfucker right here. Hey, look, I look. Know, I, know, I know I normally fuck up when I come with it. I know I be like off on my vibes with it. But this week right here, uh, I'm going to do the same thing and fuck up because I can't think of no cool ass way to introduce this bitch. Damn, man. Six episodes in and I'm still fucking up. But what I'm talking about is jams and joints. You feel me? And jam and joint of the week this week is... Da -da 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 -dum -dum -dum. Uh, something that I really been vibing with. Obviously, it's a popular ass song right now. It hit number one on the uh, Billboard charts when it came out, and it's "Wait for You" by Future, featuring uh, Tim's and Drake. And that joint is like a whole like. Don't get me wrong, I fuck with what Future and Drake did on that bitch, but like what really got me is like Tim's, like Shotty, like just uh, she just giving that energy. You feel me? Like I've been listening to that song so crazy, my girl. Like, hey, look, that's that's oh, that's your joint right now. It, it kind of is, and like. I've been listening to it so while, like, man, I'm just listening to the, uh, I went and checked out the hire, because I, I ain't checked out Tim's crazy, but, like, uh, had me listening to her song, I'm, like, going to where the sample come from, and it was crazy, like, I had went and watched the video where it came from, like, for it, I'm like, what Tim's at, and I'm like, oh, shit, because she ain't even had to drop nothing new, like, her feature on there is the sample on it, so the joint just, like, uh, going crazy for me, like, I, like I said, I really fuck with that bit, so, man, like, I obviously ain't got to tell y'all about it because it's number one on the billboards at the point in time. So obviously other people fucking with it too. But they wait for you, man. I will wait for you. I will wait for you. I will. You feel me? <laughs> so, man, yeah, man. That's that's that joint right now for the goddamn week. So I already know what it is, man. Another side note, man. Before we dip up out of here, just water, man. Look, fuck with me, man. Fuck with me. And on that note, man. I'm going to take this sip. I'm going to let out that breath. And I'm going to tell y'all, look, man, we about to be out this thing, but y'all already know what it is, man. Look, it's a stick to the code podcast. Everybody got a different code, but it don't matter what it is, man. With it's tech, culture, whatever situation it is, man, make sure you know what your code is and you stick to it, man. Stick to the code podcast. We out this thing. <laughs>